I'd like to say good morning to everyone. I'd like to thank all of you that are taking time out of your precious time to view this broadcast on today. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I'm so excited that I have the opportunity to serve the Lord today. Amen. I wasn't always able to serve God, but I'm so grateful for what God has done in my life and in my family's life. God had delivered me and saved me from a world of torment. I was headed down the wrong path. And Jesus forgave me of my sins. And he healed me and delivered me. And I became a servant of the Most High God. For that, I am very proud of. Amen. I was talking to a couple of people the other day. And I'm going to be implementing a section I call the pastor's comment. Today is the first day of it. The pastor's comment. Well, I might mention things that are going on in the world. And mind you, I don't have political views. I just speak for God. Amen. Godly wisdom, saints, is wiser than man's wisdom. Amen. So everyone was uh, upset the other day because the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. Of course, you know, they in some states, abortion is now illegal. And so... What I want to say to you all that are viewing today, don't get caught up in political things. Stay focused on your ministry for God and your life and your relationship with God. And when people ask you your opinion, if the Holy Ghost really gives you something to say, then go ahead and say it out of love. But don't get caught up about making opinions about every political thing that's going on in the world. If you're going to do anything, reflect back to the word of God and then compare it with the things that are being done in the world. Amen. And a lot of people don't like to do that. They want to omit God and just throw their opinion out there and say what they think is right and wrong. Do anyone even care anymore what the Lord thinks? There's six things the Bible says that the Lord himself hates, but seven are an abomination to him, which he just detests. Amen. And one of those things that God himself personally hates is hands that shed innocent blood. Amen. It's Proverbs 6, 16. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Check it out. And one of the things that God does not like is when innocent blood is shed. That means when you kill someone that don't desire, deserve to die. That's what innocent blood means. Taking a life from someone that was not worthy of death. That's all innocent blood means. When you take the life of someone that was not worthy of death. In other words, death shouldn't have been implemented because what occurred or what the person was or did wasn't worthy of death. Amen. And so when you look at that from a perspective of Roe versus Wade, don't you know there's a law in the book called fetal homicide? Let's say a man injures a woman. He tries to rob her. And the woman is pregnant with twins eight weeks. And he tries to rob her. And he injures her and it causes her to lose her babies. 38 states in the United States supports fetal homicide. That man will be charged for murder. In the state of Georgia, it's automatic life imprisonment. Amen. And so what's the difference in a person injuring a woman, causing her to lose her children? Think about what I'm saying. And a woman that just don't want to mess up her career because she in college, trying to finish up, get her education. She's just not ready for a baby. You went to this party, you like this guy, y'all did y'all little thing, and now you pregnant. And you don't want to embarrass your parents and you want to finish and go and get your degree because right now you don't have time for a baby. And you go down there and kill that baby because you just don't want to mess up your career. What's the difference between the robber and the mother? Both of them both shed innocent blood. In the outside of God, there is no difference. You kill someone that did not deserve to die. Amen. And this is all I'm trying to say to us. Don't get caught up in all that. It doesn't matter who killed the baby. Or how the baby dies, if it wasn't worthy of that, God is angry at that individual. Amen. Now, your laws on the book can say whatever it needs to say. I'm telling you from a perspective of God. When you shed innocent blood 
and kill someone that does not deserve to die, you going to get in some serious trouble with God. Read Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Sister Joseph going to come and we're going to go hide it in our worship service. So that's my first time implementing the pastor's comment. So stay tuned because there's going to be more things coming that will stir up your or provoke you in the spirit. And I want you to use godly wisdom in the future, not worldly wisdom. Amen. Go back and look at what the words say about a situation. And then if someone asks you something, then you give them what God would have you to say. And don't get caught up in the political arena of this crazy, foolish world we live in. Because we're going to see more crazy things than this in our future. Amen. Like to say good morning. Good morning. Today is a great day to be in the house of God. Amen. We are so glad to be here this morning. And I thank you for viewing in with us this morning. We pray that something will be said that can encourage you in your spirit and remain focused and be faithful in Jesus' name. Our scripture reading is coming from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endured to all generations. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and doers of his holy word. Let us pray. Thank you, Father for allowing us to come out this morning to worship you. And we thank you, Lord. We take that night for granted, Lord. Father, have mercy on us, Lord. Father, thank you for all of your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. Father, thank you that our covers is not our winding sheet. Father, we thank you that we have a place to come and worship you, and we take that night for granted. Father, we thank you for all of your many blessings that you have restored upon us, Lord. Father, forgive us for all of our sins that we have committed knowingly and unknowingly. Father, if we said or done anything to offend our brother and sister in Christ, please forgive us and have mercy on us, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we have a place to come and worship you every day. Thank you that we was able to walk in this morning and not be carried in. And we take that night for granted. Open up our hearts and minds and ears, Lord, and understand and to receive what you have for us on today. Father, just bless each and every person that wanted to be here this morning that couldn't bless them wherever they may be, oh Heavenly Father. Bless them in a mighty way. Continue to strengthen them and lift them up, Father. Build them up when they're weak and lift them up when they're torn down. And Father, thank you for all our neighbors. Continue to bless them as well. Keep a hedge of protection around them, oh Heavenly Father, and keep them safe. And Father, we just bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, because we are the head and we are not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are lenders and not borrowers. Anything we set our heart and minds to do, let us prosper, even as our soul prosper. Bless the man of God, O Heavenly Father, that you continue to feed him with more wisdom and knowledge, and he will feed us. And then we will go out and tell others about you, O Heavenly Father. And Father, just bless me, continue to strengthen me, and let me be a light as well into this dark and dying world. Holy Spirit, come in and abide with us, Lord. Have your way with us in this service on today. Father, bless all those that are in leadership. Father, please help 
help them to make good and godly decisions for our country. Keep us safe, Lord. Send your angels to protect us and camp around about us, Lord. And let us preach you first in everything that we do. And I thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. I thank you for food on our table, clothes on our back, and shoes on our feet. Thank you, Lord, for the activities of our lives. And I love you and I praise you for everything. And this is my prayer in Jesus' mighty name. To God be the glory. Amen. We are 
are standing in his presence. We are standing in his presence. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Sister Joseph, for those selection of songs. Welcome, Before we go into our word on today, I want to pray an altar prayer for those that are sick and shut in, for those that are having ailments in their bodies, for those that want intercessory prayer for a loved one, a friend, or family member, for those that are just needing prayer. Before we go into the word on this morning, I want you to be able to receive that word with a pure conscience and a clean heart. Yes, Lord. And so the Bible says that if we hold iniquities in our heart, God won't hear our prayer. Yes, so let's take this opportunity to pray for our loved ones, for those that we are interceding for, or even for ourselves if we have wronged someone, we, before we partake of the Holy Word of God. Because if you can't receive the sermon, if you got something in your heart that's bothering you, so we're going to ask God to help us to remove the burden and the pain or whatever it is we're facing today yeah. so we can receive that word in good spirit and right spirit. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to live into another blessed day. Yes, Lord. Father God, you said in your word that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Yes, Lord. Lord, we come asking that you forgive us if we have wronged you or wronged our brothers and sisters in Christ, yes. our neighbor, family, or friends, if we have caused them to fall by the wayside, forgive us, Father, forgive and us, forgive Lord. them. Yes, Lord. We want to pray for those that are weak and feeble, for those that have sickness and disease in their bodies, for those that are facing hardship, financial burdens. Lord, that you will send a blessing in their life, that someone will be a blessing, or you will lift them out of the muck and the mire yes. and out of their situation. Learn it. Let them learn to trust in you and look to the hills from whence coming our help. Yes, Lord. For we know, Father, without you, we will not even exist. Yes. Father, we thank you for everything that thank you're doing. You. We you. ask that you empower all believers all over the world to stand up for righteousness, yes. to lift up the weaker brother and sister in Christ, yes, Lord. to walk in love and humility toward our enemies, toward those that are our haters. Father, for let our families and our finances be blessed. That yes, you would Lord. heal our total body from yes. the top of our heads yes, yes. to the sole of our feet yes, so that Lord. we can carry on the work of the Lord. Yes, Lord. For those that have family that are not in good standing with one another, Lord, that you would send peace into their families, yes, Lord. Lord. Father, for those that are hungry today, that don't have food, Lord, that you would bless their covers, Lord. Yes, for Lord. those that are sick, Lord, that you would heal their bodies. For those that are facing depression, that you'll send a spirit of peace and joy. Father, whatever the prayer may be, you know our thoughts before we even think them, Father. Yes. We ask that you would just touch and heal. Touch Lord Jesus, you say anything we ask the Father in your name, you will do it. Yes. And Father, we ask this in Jesus' name Jesus. we pray. Amen. Amen. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Get a lot of hand clapping. 
praise. We want to thank God thank for being able to come this morning. Yes, Lord. And bring you a word from the Lord. Yes, Lord. That can encourage you along the way. Yes, Lord. And if you don't have a Bible or you don't have a notebook and a pen to write down the scriptures, this is okay. You can always go back on YouTube or tune into this broadcast and get the scriptures. But if you have a Bible or you taking notes, our ground scripture will be coming from Psalms 21, verse 4 through 8. Go ahead and find that. Psalms 21, verse 4 through 8 will be where we're taking our text from today. And I may finish and I may not finish. But if I don't finish, I pray that you will tune in on next week to get conclusion of this lesson. Amen. And this is a lesson of hope and encouragement to all those that have placed their trust in the Lord. We're living in times where things that we see are just horrific. If I just want to put it that way. We're living in horrific times. Amen. And to be honest, the Bible is just fulfilling itself at a rapid rate. Amen. But we need to be strong in the Lord. That we need to be strong in the power of his mind. That we need to put on our armor, that armor of God, so we can stand the test of time. So our scripture will be coming from Psalms 121, beginning at verse 4 through 8. And it reads, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even more. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and doers of his precious word. I really want to focus on verse number four. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. And my title this morning is called for a word of encouragement to you today. God is not sleeping. I know it looks like he's sleeping, but that's my title. God is not sleeping. He is not sleeping. Amen. He is aware and he is alert of everything that's taking place in our world in our personal life, in our families, in our finances, in our bodies, what's going on with our children. He knows all. Amen. He sees all. Amen. And he understands all. But he does not always intervene when we think he should intervene. And just because he does not intervene doesn't mean he's sleep. So I just want to remind you today, things may look dark. We're living in horrific times. But God is not sleeping. Amen. Now, how do I know God is not sleeping? Proverbs 15, 3 say, The eyes of the Lord are on every place, beholding the good and the evil. That's Proverbs 15, 3. That's what it says. The eyes of the Lord are on every place, beholding the evil and the good. Amen. Believers, I want to assure you today that God is not sleeping. Amen. He sees all, he knows all, and is alert and alive. Because the scripture says so. I just read it. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Now you know what that word slumber mean? Just imagine a mama sitting outside the bed and her baby's sick, and she just sitting up in the middle of the night because she wants to make sure that her baby gets well. But while sitting up watching her baby, she slumbers in the chair. And fall asleep. She want to sit up and watch the baby, but it's been long hours, many hours have passed. She just tired, so she kind of slumbers. God don't slumber, y'all. Amen. He don't slumber. I don't care what you see, or how bad you think it is. God is not sleeping. Amen. And He'll let things go on for whatever reason that I cannot say because He ain't showed me that. But He is God. And he's still in control. That's right. And don't you get discouraged 
And don't you start slipping away into the dark side because it looks like God don't care or God ain't coming or God won't do nothing about what's going on. God always care and he is returning. Amen. And he will do something about it. But in his own time, Amen. the Bible says one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. One day with the Lord is like a thousand years. He has no beginning or no ending. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. But I want to encourage you today. I have to encourage myself sometimes when I see what's going on in this world. Amen. There's so many things going on that will make one wonder if there really is a God. But there is a God. People just eat. Amen. But we got to stay focused on the positive thing. God has assigned angels to every believer that trusts and fear him. The Bible says the angel of the Lord encamped around those that fear him. So you'll see these things going on in the world, but it won't happen to you. It won't come nigh unto you. That's the way the scripture said. He will protect you unless you go out and make some foolish decision and do something that's foolish. Or you running with the bad crowd or the wrong crowd. The Bible says don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Amen. Now if you're going on there to minister or heal or deliver or help or love or show some compassion or feed, whatever their own ministry is. Whatever God told you to do, make sure you're going over there if they not saved for ministry. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, you know I'm going to give you the scripture. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship had Christ and Belial? He said, you don't see Christ and the devil hanging out. And then he goes on to say, Paul said, you can't eat at the Lord's table and the table of devils. Amen. You can't drink from the Lord's cup and the cup of devils. God is not asleep. We quick to blame God about what's going on, but we don't want to serve him in the way the scriptures say we should serve him. That's we right. want to serve him how we want to serve him, but the message is today and of encouragement is God is not sleeping. Amen. In Matthew 10, verse 30, it says, even the hairs on your head are number. God knows how many strings of hair is on your head. That's right. Now that's the kind of God I want to serve. Not a sparrow falls from the sky that God don't know about. And even so, Matthew 10 30 says, The very hairs on your head a number. God knows them. If He care about the sparrow, He care about you. Amen. God is not sleeping. Do not lose hope or focus on what is most important to Him. We should focus on assisting Him with reaching the lost and the blind. That's still the mission today. Jesus' last words to his disciples were, go you into all the world and teach them to observe the things that I taught you. That's the last assignment he gave them, a commission. Go you into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, you may not be called to preach, but you're called to live for Christ. Amen. If any man will come after me, Jesus said, let him take up his cross daily and what? Follow him. God is still concerned about those that are lost and those that are blind. Amen. And that's our job as a church, as a Christian, as a believer, to continue in the cause or the movement, as some would say, of saving souls. Amen. And that's why I'm here today. Because I'm going to keep on preaching till either Jesus return or God call me home. There's no quitting in the Joseph house. Amen. I am a servant of the Most High God, and I hope you are too. There is work to do, regardless of what's going on around us. His business must continue to thrive in the midst of all the turmoil we see or experience. No matter what you see or experience, God's business must continue to thrive. And just like Jesus persevered past his adversaries, he faced a lot of opposition. God expects for us to take care of his business in the midst of this turmoil world. Because souls still are hanging in the balance. And that's what the duty of the church is. To bring people to Jesus. The church job is not to save nobody. We can't save nobody. The only one that can save someone is yourself. Jesus can't even save you unless you submit to him. The Bible says, whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, you don't do no calling, you ain't going to be saved. Amen. And that's Romans chapter 10. Whosoever call on the Lord shall be saved. Jesus want to save you, but he won't do it without your participation. 
Amen. And so, in the midst of all the turmoil that we see our spirit, God expects for us to be obedient to his calling. Christ is our example. Philippians 2 8 says, Christ was obedient even to the death of the cross. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 says, Christ was obedient even to the death of the cross. Even though he knew he was going to the cross, and even when he got on the cross, he never detoured from his assignment. The Bible says he was obedient even to the death of the cross. Amen. And how much more shall we continue to serve God no matter how many people stop or quit serving God? No matter how many people turn their back on God? No, how, no matter how many people go back to their former life? God expects for his children to be obedient to the end. Amen. The Bible says he that endure to the end shall be saved. Amen. God is still good and he is still faithful. He is still capable of healing and deliverance. Confusion does not stop God from delivering us from trials and tribulation. He the same God. Confusion in this world does not stop God from delivering us from trials and tribulations. Amen. In Hebrews 13, 5, he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. He promises never to leave us or forsake us. So we got to remember that God is not sleeping. Amen. No matter what you see going on, no matter what you experience, he's still in charge and he's still on the throne. Yes, he is. And he's still able to reach out and help you in your situations. The Bible says not to him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you ask or think. God is not asleep. Amen. Be empowered today, believer. Stay on the front line. Focus on what's important to him and not ourselves. We got to remember that we are servants of God. Amen. And we serve the Lord. Yes, Lord. We must not lose focus, but rely on him and his guidance from the Holy Spirit as we see our world in a state of confusion. Loyalty is the key to our ministry and our relationship with him. That's the key, loyalty. In the relationship and in the ministry. We can't lose focus. Amen. But we need to rely on the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. And the Holy Spirit will empower you to do the work of the ministry. If you're not, see, people think that God gives people the Holy Spirit uh, for them to just be blessed and all that. No, that's not the true function of the Holy Spirit. The main function of the Holy Spirit is to seal you, according to Ephesians chapter 1. From the day that you confess Christ, read Ephesians chapter 1. From the day that you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what God does, he seals you. Amen. He seals you with the Holy Spirit to mark you. In other words, so when he come back to destroy this world, he don't destroy his children because you got that seal upon you. And that's, that's right. it. That's a down payment until the day of redemption. He seals you until he delivers you out of this world. Yes. Amen. Amen. When I used to work at the meat market, uh, they used to order those half of cows. And they used to order them from a certain part of Texas, Yokum, Texas. That's where they used to like to get all their cows from, Yokum, Texas. And when that cow would come in in that truck, the cows would come in in that truck, my boss would go back there and inspect them to make sure it got that seal on it. That Amen. say Yokum, Texas. Amen. To make sure that, because you know, they the way they cut their meat and the way they care for their animals and the way they package their stuff, it's with excellency. Mm -hmm. So he was looking for that seal on that cow with that ink that say Yoko, Texas. Amen. But when you give your life to God, God seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. First, first he just seals you. Then as you obey him, he starts leading you and guiding you. And then when you get in a little trouble and you feel like quitting, he empowers you to keep on pressing like I'm doing today. Amen. Like you doing today. Amen. We know you've been through hell and high water. We know you're probably going through something right now. But you ain't going to quit because the Holy Spirit empowers you to press on in the midst of all trauma. Amen. Getting ready to close. Titus 2.12 says, 
says, teaching us that in denying all ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteous, and godly in this present world. Titus 2.12. Amen. Teaching us that denying all ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteous, and godly in this present world. God expects for you to hold up the bloodstained banner regardless of what's going on in your life, in your marriage, with your child, with your job, with your health. Hold up the bloodstained banner. God is able to do exceedingly above all you acts of things. And we can't cut loose because things are hard, because times are hard. We can't cut corners. We got to stay on the battlefield and live that discipline life. Jesus said the road to life is straight and narrow, and few people find it. Amen. But the road to destruction is broad and wide. And he said many people going that way. A lot of people that gave up because they just can't take it. That's Too much right. pressure on them. Amen. Jesus is our example. He succeeded in carrying out his mission, although he faced many oppositions and obstacles. I want to, I want you and me to walk in his shoes, take on his mindset, and be empowered and motivated by love. Amen. Take on the mindset that Jesus class and what had and what was his mindset that he wanted to please the Father. Amen. And God said he did it because he said, This is my beloved son, and whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Amen. And that's what he wants to say about you today. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. But we need to take on the mindset that he had and be empowered and motivated by love. Ephesians say we need to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Amen. And put on the new man, yes. which is after God is created in righteous and true hope. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. And be renewed in the spirit of our mind. And then Philippians 2 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Take on the same attitude, take on the same perspective that he had. He says, Heaven don't rejoice. Until one sinner repents. He don't worry about the 99 sheep that are righteous, Jesus said. Amen. But he go look for that one sheep that's lost, that done fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. And bring that sheep back to the fold. He not worry about the 99 that he know going to do the right thing. He worry about that one lost sheep. Are you that one lost sheep? Let me encourage you today. God ain't sleep. Amen. He see you struggling with your bills. He see you struggling with your finances. He sees you struggling to put food on the table. Gas prices are high. And this too shall pass. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in Jesus' name.